Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Okay. okay. Let me so this is how liberty dies. With thunderous applause. John Doyle in. Heck off, Tommy. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, you commies. Did you watch the debates? Did you watch the same debates that I did? Because red flags going up, my guys. You know, not that they had any flags on stage last night because they don't believe in taking pride in the country, but, you know, it was really easy for back in the day if a Democrat said something like, you know, I think we should probably not let felons or mentally ill people purchase guns. And Republicans would be like, ah, they're coming to take your guns. Vote for me. Because I won't take your guns. But now you've got Amy here from Minnesota just straight up admitting that gun confiscation is what's going to happen. Gun confiscation, right? If the government is buying back, how do you, how do you not have that conversation? Well, that's not confiscation. You right. would give them the offer to buy back their gun. But I'll say this. I look at these proposals and I say, um, does this hurt my Uncle Dick and his deer stand coming from a proud hunting and fishing state? These proposals don't do that. Well, it's not confiscation because... We'll give you the option to get money for it when we take it from you. The value of the rifle cannot be measured in dollars. It's not worth however much I spent on it plus upgrades or whatever. The true value of the rifle? Peace of mind. Peace of mind knowing that, hey, if our government's ever tried to go tyrannical, and one could argue that after these first two Democrat debates that it's basically inexorable within my lifetime, at least I've got an AR-15 or six or what have you. And that's the thing that I mentioned in the Venezuela video that's arguably the most important takeaway from witnessing these failed socialist countries, which is that they voted this into effect. In most cases, they allowed this to happen to their country. Once you give the government that much power, they're not just going to give it up. When has that ever happened? Hint. It hasn't. So you can vote your way into socialism, but just be prepared to fight your way out of it. And we've seen that happen before. And that, Senator, is why we need guns. I don't care about your uncle and his deer rifle. I really don't. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Hunting is cool and everything. Let's not stand on ceremony here. Let's not. No, no one wants to make you miss turkey season. Now, my uncle. No, the reason we have guns is to protect ourselves from people that wish to violate our rights. That's really it. The Second Amendment was not written for your uncle to sit in his deer stand. The Second Amendment was written because our founding fathers knew that power corrupts and as a result, government tends to expand. And so we have a right to bear arms because we have a right to self-preservation. And it would be unwise to violate that in the name of your utopian worldview because the natural manure of the tree of liberty is the blood of both patriots and tyrants, to paraphrase Thomas Jefferson. And speaking of liberty, this culture doesn't even care about it anymore. I mean, we're too comfortable and we're, we're dangerously ignorant. We're dangerously ignorant. We're too distracted by Netflix to actually care about the future of our country. Because, you, what? What are you, you're telling me that I'm taking this for granted? For granted? Meaning that this could be gone someday? When's the last time you've heard anybody say, well, you know, I just finished reading this analysis on 19th and 20th century world governments. And I do have to say, I've noticed some parallels between their collapses and symptoms that we can see surfacing here. No, it's always, oh my gosh. I'm rewatching The Office on Netflix for the eighth time and I totally forgot how cute season two Jim and Pam are. It's like these people have no personalities outside of $6 designer concoctions of caffeine and sugar, binge watching mindless television programs for hours, if not days on end, alcohol consumption and like liking dogs. That's basically it. That's what our people have become. And given that, yeah, why shouldn't non-citizens have access to free healthcare? Why shouldn't college be free? Why shouldn't we raise the minimum wage? Kamala Harris even, I mean, just look at this. Hey guys, you know what? America does not want to witness a food fight. They want to know how we're going to put food on their table. Yeah. <laughs> It isn't even her that makes me upset, it's the applause. It's the mindless seals in the audience cheering about, yeah, how is the government gonna put food on our table? Why is that something that you would cheer for? Why would you cheer for government dependence? All of their ignorance, by the way, could literally be cured with an afternoon at a public library, but it's the apathy. That's why we're here. No one cares anymore. Why should they? Well, it'll probably all work out in the end, right? I'll just believe whatever's nice, whatever makes me look virtuous on social media, but when the chips are down, I don't know. Someone else will figure it out. These people have no sense of responsibility. Not for themselves, not for their families, for healthcare, self-preservation, <laughs> economic status, none of it. I am so depressed. Yes. But there's a reason. There's a reason for this, though, that there's a record number of Democrats <laughs> seeking the nomination. And it's because they truly believe that whoever wins the nomination is going to become president. They sincerely reject the idea that Trump actually is not that bad of a president. In fact, he's been a very successful president thus far, despite their unrelenting and unconditional opposition towards him. And so 
they can't, and I've said this before, they can't escape this echo chamber. So they truly believe that anything that deviates from their worldview is atypical. And for that reason, regardless of their public criticisms of Trump and his administration, they perceive him to be a gift to their political aspirations because they think that whoever runs against him is going to just have a walk in the park. I mean, despite that Trump beat 16 Republicans, despite that Trump beat Hillary Clinton, while well, almost every facet of the media were working against him, despite that Trump has been successful while in office, even with opposition from both Democrats and Republicans, despite all of that they think that it's going to be a cakewalk for them and they're wrong they're wrong because the trump economy is great they are wrong because trump's base is loyal to him they're wrong because his approval rating is decent and they're wrong because his opponent is likely going to be a socialist tyrant and that means that trump is going to win again because even though the people that support these democrats can cheer loudly and artificially inflate their numbers through their control of the media and hollywood and and bum us out in the process these independents aren't going to buy it that's actually interesting. These people are so ignorant that it actually makes me sad. Like it drains my energy. But nonetheless, these people are going to lose. There's maybe like nine of them that I would take seriously. That would be Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, uh, Pete Buttigieg, who looks like the Mad Magazine guy. You won't be able to unsee that now. Beto O'Rourke, Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, and Tulsi Gabbard. And those of those, the only ones that actually have a chance at the nomination are Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, which is what I said a few months ago when I did a video on this. Note that virtually all of the Democrats have come out in support of open borders and paying for the health care of illegal immigrants. And Kamala Harris has actually gone as far uh, as to call for the abolition of private health care. It's part of the reason why I said that Bernie Sanders had no chance, folks. It's too average now, policy-wise. Nothing really stands out. He's just like the rest of the Democrats. The things that made him unique in 2016, which were his radically left policies, that's now the platform. This is why Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang have no chance, as sad as it is for me to admit, because I actually like Andrew Yang and I respect Tulsi Gabbard. And I think that they have energy behind them. But Tulsi Gabbard, despite being economically progressive, is not liked by the Democratic establishment because she has, quote, conservative beliefs about foreign policy, such as acknowledging the existence of radical Islamic terrorism and demanding that then President Obama do the same. And coincidentally, she was only allowed to speak for about six and a half minutes. But hey, she's lucky because Andrew Yang was only given three minutes to speak. Andrew Yang is the outsider. So yeah, no way that they were going to let him speak because he would make them look stupid. And I've hinted at my support for Andrew Yang before, and some of you have asked me to clarify, so I will. Uh, the reason I support Andrew Yang is because Andrew Yang rejects identity politics. He does not demonize his political opponents and he is an outsider. And I genuinely believe that he is a good person. And what I would very much like to see happen is Yang become something of a household name because I think that he could shock the democratic base out of this trance of everyone who disagrees with me is Hitler. And I'm not saying that it even could happen by, uh, by this point. But I do think if anyone could do it, it would be Yang. I don't think that the Democratic establishment will allow for that, though. And evidently, that is correct. But I'm still hoping that he can influence the dynamic to some degree. And he's also the only one with any ideas. I mean, maybe Bernie, too. But, you know, it's like Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren. They assemble teams of policy coordinators and strategists to figure out what they're going to be running on. And, you know, there are total puppets. All these politicians are. That's why every politician has their own little compilation video on YouTube of them switching their stances on things like seven or eight times throughout their career. Andrew Yang had to come up with his own ideas and work from there. His entire campaign is a product of his own forethought. And even if we think that that is misguided or unsustainable, you have to respect him because he respects us. And, you know, that's refreshing. That being said, he also joined them in support for decriminalizing legal immigration and providing them with health care. So, you know, it was fun while it lasted, but uh, it was a meme to begin with and all good memes must end. Mr. Mr. Gang. I would pass a $1,000 freedom dividend for every American adult starting at age 18, which would speed us up on- You see that? How they laugh at him? The absolute audacity of these people to laugh at Andrew Yang, like really? That's the radical policy? $1,000 per month for every citizen? That's where we're drawing the line here? It's fine when we're going to have Medicare for all and all includes illegal immigrants. Oh, and by the way, we also want to decriminalize border crossing. That plus free health care is the largest incentive that we could come up with for more of them to just come pouring in. And since it's decriminalized, they really will just be undocumented immigrants because they won't be illegal anymore. We also want to ban assault weapons. We've got 90 trillion burning a hole in our pocket. So we like the Green New Deal. We want free public college, free preschool. We want slavery reparations. We want to abolish ICE. But $1,000 a month? What are you, an idiot or something? Let me point and laugh. And, oh, well, John, you know, they're not all socialists. There's some moderates up there. Really? The one guy that came out and said, hey, uh, we need to chill out on this whole socialism thing, Hickenlooper? Yeah, he's at like 0.3% in the poll. So I don't really know that the party's listening. And, you know, as this whole thing continues, we'll have opportunities 
to rip apart these policies one by one by one. But that's not the point here. The point is that it's time to talk to your friends. It's time to talk to your family members, your coworkers, anyone that you know that's a Democrat. Because at this point, it's not even about getting them to vote for Trump. It's about getting them to realize how toxic and radical their own party has become. You're not even recommending that they vote for your candidate. You're just saying, hey, you know, uh, are these really things you're okay with? Open borders, socialized health care, gun confiscation, you know, those aren't the policies of JFK. Those aren't the policies of Bill Clinton. Those aren't, those really aren't even the policies of Barack Obama. It just keeps getting worse all the time. You guys need to fix it. You guys need to take control of your party or more likely, you know, we find out that this is the logical conclusion of your party and it's only going to continue to get worse and increasingly out of touch with the average citizen. And normally that'd be fine because it's like, hey, dig in your own grave. But, oh, what's that? They're importing voters from other countries. Okay, so yeah. You know, this election is very important. And they say that every election cycle, of course, because they're hyperbolic. They're the boy that's cried wolf every four years for the last few decades, whatever. But this election is quite literally a choice between America, freedom, prosperity, or socialism, tyranny, and hardship. And the type of damage they're going to do isn't just, ah, well, good thing we got our guy back in office so we can repeal that silly tax increase. No, they're going to fundamentally change the core of this country beyond repair. And they'll have thunderous applause from their mindless seals while they do it. And so we need your help. If you don't have the time, your money helps too. You know, if you care about the future of this country, you should be donating to campaigns. You should be donating to organizations that advocate for our values and for our country. I mean, not to do the cliche campus conservative, of, what would Ronald Reagan do? Where's the Gipper when you need him? But freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction, I believe is the quote. And the time to fight back is now because I swear to you, our window is closing and it isn't going to reopen cleanly. The time to watch an entire television series on Netflix is long gone. We cannot afford to be silent and we cannot afford to be passive. History is watching and so are your children and their children, and their children, in future generations. Because if our legacy is that we let America fall to socialism, we will never be forgiven. And previous generations, sure, you know, they let them take over Hollywood, let them take over the media, the universities, whatever. We're pushing back now, and we're doing that because if we don't, then no one else will. That's the most important realization. If you don't, no one else will. They're going to keep indoctrinating the country into socialism, mass immigration, firearm confiscation. Yeah, that's a given. That's not going to end. You decide if we're going to resist it or not. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, you also gotta follow me on Instagram. I did a live stream during the first Democrat debate, and it was a lot of fun. Got to talk to some of you guys. Big shout out to hashtag April Gang. Big shout out to Luke with his chaotic gamer energy. Big shout out to Jackson, the 13 year old with the really fuzzy cat. Kid was epic. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'd like you to be a part of it. So follow me on Instagram. And thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.